Ah, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Happy Saturday. I hope you are all having an incredible weekend. Uh, my name is Nicholas Vaselli. I am the um, artistic director of Theater Breaking Through Barriers. And yes, we are indeed coming to you live uh, from our TVTV TV offices uh, high above the Thunderdome in beautiful Midtown Manhattan. And it is a gorgeous day today. It really is. Um, even though you need to mask up, you sh I hope you had a chance to go out and sort of feel how, how nice it was out today. Um, wow, we are now into, um, what is this, day day five, day six, day six. The, the week is going by so quickly. We began our, our Playmakers Intensive, our second Playmakers Intensive, by the way, VPI two, Voices from the Great Experiment. We began on Monday and we're going to be going through till uh, Monday the 10th. So I'm so glad that you were able to join us. I, I have to say, this is such a great experience for us because oh, the, the, the amazing work that comes out of this in such short time, it's in an, it is an intensive, so the work is very, very intense. But when you see uh, the, the work that comes out of it, the quality and the commitment, it is, it is inspiring, and that's why we do it. So um, I hope you enjoyed the previous shows. If you did not, you can certainly find them on our YouTube channel. They're all there. You can watch them, uh, or you can also watch them on Facebook. Um, but I can guarantee you this is happening right now. It's live, so I'm so glad that you're able to tune in. Tonight, tonight we have um, such an incredible play by a really incredible playwright. Um, his name is Enrique Huili. I don't know if you've ever heard of Enrique, but you will. Uh, He's, he's just an extraordinary artist. And so um, when, you, when you find someone who has um, such a great sensitivity and a great um, finesse and knack for being able to, 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 to spin stories, you know, that you just, you just sense it. So I'm so excited that you're, you're able to see this premiere of, of Enrique's latest work. Um, the play is entitled Three Stops from Loop Tape Station. Um, it is directed by, oh my goodness, uh, again, a wonderful director, Ashley Scott. We worked with Ashley back in 2018. She actually was assistant directing on um, our production of A.R. Gurney's The Fourth Wall. And uh, again, such a, a gifted um, director and, and so in tune and just really locked into this material. Um, and our, our two incredible uh, performers, our two incredible stars, um, um, Melissa Jennifer Gonzalez and Juan Carlos Diaz. They're just incredible. So anyway, no more talking. I want you all, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Enrique Willis' Three Stops from Loop Tape Station. My name is David Grossberg, and I'd like to know, do you think the children of illegal aliens should be allowed to attend Texas public schools free, or do you think that their parents should pay for their education? I'd like to see something done about the illegal alien problem that would be so sensitive and so understanding about labor needs and human needs that that problem wouldn't come up. Make it possible for them to come here legally with a work permit, and then while they're working and earning here, they pay taxes here. And when they go on to go back, they can go back and they can cross and open the border both ways. Lovely Lady Liberty with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. The immigration reform that we're proposing would boost our economy and shrink our deficits. Independent economists have said that if the Senate bill became law over the next two decades, our economy would grow by $1.4 trillion more, and it would reduce our deficits by $850 billion more. And you don't have to be an economist to figure out that workers will be more productive if they've got their families here with them. They're not worried about deportation. They're not living halfway around the world. Uh, this isn't just the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to do. We are going to build a great wall. The wall is going to be paid for by Mexico. To build the wall, 
We are going to build a real wall. Am I supposed to talk now? I pressed the wrong. No, it's just that you had this funny look earlier, and uh, I thought it may. No, no, I it's just that. See, I was trying to get. The, I, I'm so sorry. No, wait. You go ahead. What was that? I interrupted you. You were saying. You had this funny look earlier in you. I thought maybe I know this kind of thing that swarms around your head keeping you afloat like that, suspended in midair. I can very much contribute to that. Can lend it to you if you like. Well, no, that's not really what I was trying to imply. You look so still, an unmovable force. The crickets keep singing into a far distance away. If I don't move, then they don't move. We can keep still. The road ahead is still a few steps more. Problem is that I just needed some kind of silence. It's only fair. How was I supposed to take what I need at that age? Honestly, I could have done it myself. The only thing that seemed odd to me was that there were no street lights whatsoever. I didn't know roads could be that dark. My lungs can be so full, as if I was so hungry and devoured a plate of food out of panic, and now I'm dealing with the aftermath. I don't really get the munchies, so why can't my lungs just be free? I still really like swimming. That should count for something. Was it really the cherry bush you wanted? I, I told you no. You know what we were doing or what I was seeing, in fact, I, I just didn't like the separation that came later. I was too cold, that's all. The problem is they don't always understand what's best for them. I can't just sit here and let it happen. I can't just let a gas bomb go off in my living room. Oh, you're misunderstanding this whole thing. Because now it's all over, we can just start this over again? Sure, it makes no difference to me. Uh, are you going to eat that banana? Wait, how far did I go? The banana, is that something you're going to eat? I was thinking about it. It just seems so boring, to be honest. It really does. A cutie like you should be. Okay, let's try this again. My fear is that I just don't want you to be locked up, surrounded by filing cabinets with a banana sticking out of your mouth. Is that where I'm gonna end up? Who knows? But what I can tell you is that I've got a bigger picture of you, a dream of wonders. I wouldn't want us to be so grumpy and that I would be keep, that I would keep misplacing the domino piece. Never had any kind of set, let alone a leather bound case. Not here at least. Otherwise I can't remember anything before that. Except my toes were always covered in dust and I just wanted to remove you from the oblique cloud that seemed to thicken my eyesight. So don't be annoyed with me. Plus, there isn't anything before or after. Right now is just a never ending cycle. I've been waiting for the plea bargain. I'm beginning to not feel my left foot anymore. Strange, we still have to swim against the current. Wait, I don't know how to swim. 
once it's strapped on tight, resting on my back, head above water, there is nothing to be scared of. This is all normal. This is all peaceful. No more jackals grinning at a full course meal that we can't provide and no more hungry tummies. You don't have us anymore. I actually wanted to express the clarity that I don't have because the identity they gave me is no greater than a grease stain or is treated as equal to an infected cow. And you never came to clear that up for me. Shh. It's only procedural. Those men really do like adjusting their belt buckles. I'm a very small woman, so let's play nice. I'm sure I have all the right answers to your questions. I just want to be reunited with my little boy. Look in one all. direction and there I was, alone. I could have sworn it was the first time I've ever been left alone. See, I didn't know how to read, how to talk, let alone understand their language. Why do I have to be kept in solitary confinement? I don't even know how to put on my goddamn shirt. Uh, what these men don't realize is that they're pre precipitating for me to cough too much. Pero no entiendo qué decir. La cosa más importante es mi niño. Así que dame mi inhalador, por favor, antes que, que me muero. You have the ability to fast forward, huh? Right now I need you to... I need you, but you seem to be stuck in a box that I'm desperately trying to unlock. Of course I do. I played it like chess. I even got a guide to get me across the desert on a sweet deal too. I might even have enough to buy some sandwiches for the road. This might help you. You see how my nose has changed? How my cheeks have changed position and my face has elongated? <laughs> You see? It's working. <laughs> I knew it. Boy, do I have a deal for you. Okay, what is it? Think of a bridge that can be connected to another side. A side that you could just easily cross. In fact, you could stop halfway and enjoy the view. I'm talking about- Wait! a good broad shoulder kind of guy. Tell me, sailor, do you have any big dreams ahead? Like the big apple, her arm extended high up in the air, her flame creating a crimson tide that will swallow the whole city. That bleach orange sky is only the beginning. I hate to escape your love as I drift off in an airplane. I, I'm too prideful to look back, and I might never be able to be hugged by you again. Watching you stand so stoic, not budging a smile or frown. I only wanted your forgiveness, darling. But all I get is your dull stare. No, I know we've so much more ahead of us, don't we? Wait, why are you speaking? You pressed that thingamajig and I was like, yo, what up? No, no, no. I mean, why continue in English? Si quieres hablar en español, me da igual. No, that's not necessary. Listen, I know what you're doing and I need you to stop, okay? You know what I need, so let's just try to help each other out, okay? Because I thought you promised me this time. I've been sitting here for a while now and they, they never let me go to school. I came up with my own coping mechanisms. I've been working really hard sanding these cages down just so it can seem like it's my own room. Oh, that's good. Real good. Yeah. <laughs> what about your toenails? Did you get them to stop bleeding? Oh, my toenails were not bleeding. That was your feet. You were carrying me as I patted you on the back, remember? One, two, three, breath. One, two, three, breath. <laughs> No, you're getting it all wrong. First of all, it's three, two, one breath. Plus you're crazy. Look at you. There's no way I can carry you. You're too big and strong 
and handsome. Right, enough. Clearly time hasn't done you good. Of course it has, my Keem. I knew exactly how to play the perfect game of hide and seek. We hid in the bushes, let the beams extrapolate into a far distance. I don't mind if they catch the lizard crossing the street. They wouldn't be worried about such little creatures going off into an elaborated landscape of drones. Wait, did, did they follow you? If so, I, I gotta go. No. Then prove it. What? Get up. What? I said get up. No. Get up! Fucking get up! Stop it. Run a lap for me. Run in three circles. Uh, no, wait. Um, run in two circles. Uh, no, wait. Run in one circle. Run in one circle. That would be enough for me. I promise. Well, go ahead. Prove it to me. Stop. Did they follow you? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've, I've got to go. Wait, I just can at the moment. Stand the fuck up! Stop it! They're going to eat you, you know that? That's why we were put in these cages. N enough! I just need to concentrate, okay? I need you to concentrate. But I'm not really into cyber sex, though. <laughs> I mean, Christ, you can't even get it up. Stop! This was supposed to be informative. That's what you said. When I needed you, you said you- Then say it! I'm trying to talk to you in a proper way as if you were here with me right now. Can't we make this happen? Say it! Uh, Lupe, I just want to talk about- I just need you to- Catch up with me. You see, I'm just here alone. It's one thing to be part of something, but I don't even know what stance I should take. Believe me, I tried multiple ones. And each time I step forward, I, I can only find a shadow that haunts me. So in order for you to understand, you must know that that shadow is real because it itches and I don't know what to do. My whole being is frozen in a tight grasp of reality that can only be interpreted into two different landscapes. And I don't want those drones, nor the cages. I have no choice. I never had a choice. So what am I to do, huh? If I could show you a different position, I would. But it's not like I can get up off the seat and get you a glass of water and say, how are you doing? This is my living room. and. This is my kitchen or, or, or run up the stairs and say, I did it. I made my bed. No, I ask you now, what do I do? You're way too far back. And I can't have that anymore. I'm gonna make my first decision. The only one that I decided to have. No one else can make it for me. No, no drones, no borders, no men identifying me. We are two people standing in front of each other, eye to eye. The moment is now, and I'm bringing you to this very moment. You see, I'm, I'm freeing you. You get to be here with me. Not trapped in a lost continuing vortex, swallowing in an endless labyrinth with lizards picking at your skin. No, I get to have you here today with me. I get to control this. And I just want to be able to say that it's been a long time since you said you'd be back in five minutes. I may be confined here, but I plan, or I'm trying to plan to move forward. So I need you to catch up. Run. Run f much faster than you did, okay? Are we good? Are we on the same page here? <laughs> but you can't even stand. <laughs> Fuck! Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not Kim. My name is not Kim. It's Joaquin. Darling, hello? I was just trying to be cool. You know kids, right? Hello? Listen, I didn't have a choice, so I thought that would be a good one. Hello? Wait!
you're at a 10 and I need you at a six, okay? Okay. Good. Now take a deep breath. Okay. Good. How does that feel? Good? Kind of. Cup of coffee? What? Do you want a cup of coffee? No. Why not? Because, because it's too late for me. I could always have a cup of coffee late and still go to sleep whenever I wanted. Yeah. Even with a torn down cube invested with filth, I could still turn into a party. <laughs> and let me tell you, it wasn't just warm enough. You, we were sinking into dead roots. All we kept eating were weeds. I usually could make anything work, but it was time to flee. Do you know why? No, oh, I, I don't remember. That's right. And I've been searching for you. You have? Oh yes, my little Keem. You see, I have a proposition for you. An equilibrium, you might say. What? Can you hear me now? No, I just, I just don't understand. You said you've been searching for me. Yes. You want to tell me something? Sell me something? Yes. Are you a salesman? <laughs> Baby, you don't need no man to sell you something. If you look out your window and squint really hard, you'll be able to see the bridges. What bridge? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Drum roll, please. Um, okay. Ready? Yes. I don't hear the drum roll. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> the Golden State Bridge! Are you serious? Yes! I got you the best price too. Why would I want the Golden Gate Bridge? Oh my God. You don't know? Or what? On the Golden State Bridge, you can gain eternal life. I don't see how that's possible. They can't take you away for trespassing, nor can, nor can't they take, no, nor can't they separate you from your only comfort, not on the bridge. It would be just us. And once you purchase it, then, then I can live forever. Is that what you want? Oh God, yes. You don't know? Oh what? No, I don't. I don't have time to die. I have too much to do. You see, I want to teach you everything I know. I want to see California. It's supposed to be warm there too. And this asthma thing is really annoying. I keep choking on the dust balls from hiding in the bushes for too long. Unfortunately, not everyone, can, not everyone in the group can keep quiet. I thought I could run, I could, I thought I could run them out, but the best thing to do was to just give in. They won't hurt us. They're not, mon they're not monsters. They will understand that I'm not only trying to care for myself. I just want a small opportunity to have a normal life, that's all. I'd rather be isolated and alone than have them look me up and down as if I was meant to pick up after them. And I get it now. You're right. My toes were bleeding, but it's only because I wanted to cover your feet. They're so small. Come on, let me see you smile. They won't let me leave. You never taught me how to use my wheelchair. You said you would be back in five minutes. Listen, it's a deal of a lifetime. You're not listening to me. Of course I am. I got you the best deal, didn't I? No, I just want you to come back already. But you still haven't asked the most important question. Fine, how can you live forever if I purchase the Golden Gate Bridge? I thought you'd never ask. You go on to the walkway. You look, look over the water, see? You see how it looks like stars are dancing on top of it when the sun is really bright. Now, here's the tricky part, but I think you can do it. Ready? Okay. 
it's tricky. So don't get upset with yourself every time it doesn't work. But think of me, only me, and say hi. I remember, and I still keep remembering you. And whisper my name over the water. Let it fall, and then just don't pay attention to where it goes. Let it fall into an oblivion because you see my love. It doesn't matter how. It only matters if you get one opportunity. That's all I'm asking for. No one is going to sell you a better mattress, a better kitchen, a better home than me. That I can guarantee you. After that, you will be able to finally cross that bridge and not worry about where you're going to sleep. You can have a steady schedule and be free. All you have to do is think positively. It's the best medicine. You see, it's a deal of a lifetime. So sure I can do those things? Yes. Why do you have to think so positively? I just, I just know it's going to work out. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I had a baby. No. Yeah. I know, you would think I look too young and good to have given birth. Yeah, you're pretty. A pretty lady can give birth too, you know. Right. I had a baby, a little guy. He kept tripping all the time, which is normal when a baby tries to find its legs. As the years go by, he still can't find them. I keep showing him where they are, but he keeps panicking like he's a fish out of water. This is the part I hate the most because I got to keep his mouth shut. All he wants to do is cry and cry. I know it's hot. I know there are scary critters all over the place, but, but they can't find us. I honestly surprise myself on how fast I can run while carrying him. I know a place where I can earn money, jobs, that no one notices that they exist. I'll take them and then I can reconstruct my little boy. I just want him to have more opportunities than me. I'm not asking for a lot. He wasn't that heavy at all. That is why I entered the Inferno Desert. It's supposed to be very civilized on the other side. Uh, that's what I heard, at least. As we tiptoed over the broken countries, they gave too many promises. I lost my inhaler. I needed to stop coughing. I kept coughing too much. It's okay, though. They were only taking me for a few minutes. He knows I'll be right back. I mean, I can't imagine they want to babysit him all day, right? I gotta, I gotta make my chest stop hurting. It, it, it feels like it's burning inside. Like, like I lost all room inside my chest. The meeting was going a little longer than expected. They said they could fix him for me. All I needed to do was hand him, hand him over. What else was I supposed to do? I was even told that someone had my inhaler. He said it in Spanish. That was good because I felt like maybe they are on my side. Then all, then all five men started taking their pants off. I asked them softly and quietly again, please, <coughs> please give me my inhaler. <coughs> Where are you taking me? What? Can you hear me? What? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. What were you saying? Hello? I'm here. Hello? I said hello. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> hello? 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 Don't leave me alone with them. Hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs>
Wow. That's, uh, the show has such an incredible impact. Uh, it tr truly is amazing. And uh, I'm just really blown away by it. Uh, I have to uh, apologize to all of you. Uh, we were experiencing some tef technical difficulties beyond our control, actually. I know that we froze a little bit on Facebook. Uh, that's, that's just in the stream. This is welcome to live. <laughs> well, we'll welcome to live theater. This is exactly what it's like. We always have these little things that happen. Uh, but I think that the show, I, I think, you know, the show has such a great, a tremendous impact and I'm just so proud of it. I'm so proud of the actors and I'm so proud of, uh, our wonderful playwright and our wonderful director. And I want to bring them all out here. Come on out, you guys. Oh, Melissa, Enrique, author, <laughs> Ashley, uh, Juan Carlos, thank you so much again for this really powerful play. First of all, I'm actually really amazed because there's a lot of technical stuff in this and I meant to ask about this sooner. So I wanted to, Ashley, did you do the video? Did you do the video for all of this? Yes. Yes, I created the video and the sound. What? Views. Yeah, I'm That's... working on my editing, trying to, <laughs> trying to make it better. The queen right here. You, you, you rocked the house. This was, that was amazing. It's such a great um, way to open this piece because, well, it sets a stage. It just sets the stage. Um, and uh, it sort of throws us into this, this, this world that these characters live in. And um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm curious. I, I really wanted to, to sort of, because we talked about it a, a little bit earlier. Uh, I, what I loved about it was the fact that you, you pulled pieces from so many former presidents all talking about the same thing, all talking about immigration and an immigration system that is indeed broken and needs to be fixed. And no one has ever really quite gotten a handle on how that should be done. Uh, it, it, is, it is, you know, one of the many issues that we as a country need to really focus on and, and fix. But the the... The reason why I love theater so much, the reason why I, I think why we why we all do theater is that not only does it hold a mirror up to our world, uh, but it allows it allows us to express in very real and human terms uh, all aspects of the human condition. It allows us to to really ex it allows us to be able to make a very strong and important point in a very human way um and and this just does it, it just it this play just was exactly what i think uh what i what i what i was hoping to encapsulate what this this intensive is about we call this intensive uh, uh voices from the great experiment and there's many meanings to that uh what we're doing doing it on this format this is an ex this is a great experiment this is the great experiment uh of course america has always been referred to as the great experiment so to hear voices of our artists that is very important uh and it's also very important during this time on this medium it's, it's amazing how all of our events have brought us all together to this point two weeks ago most of you didn't even know who we were or or had never had a thought that we'd be working together in this way. So it's funny how it happens. Uh, I am going to, I, I do want to, I, I do want to talk to Enrique again. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to turn on your sound there for a second. Uh, this is, this is so, su such a, such a well-crafted play. Uh, you have, you, yes, you had mentioned uh, that you love poetry, but there are, there are passages and elements of dialogue here that are just so incredibly poetic and so 
evocative, so visual, you know, that it's, it's just amazing work that you've, that you've done. And, uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by it. Um, I, I, I think, I don't know. I, what in, can I ask you? I know you you've mentioned your you you like sort of uh, abstract uh, expressionistic or I should say um, uh, surrealistic work, but what it like what inspires you? What is it that what is it that fuels you? You've had such I, I think you have such a, an amazing and interesting life, and I, I see many great things in store for you. But what inspires you? Thank you so much for those kind words. It's really uh, so nice to, uh, anyways, I, I mean, I guess what inspires me is like, um, I mean, truthfulness and storytelling. I think it's like the moment, that's what really um, inspires me because the moment that I can touch someone in the audience as an actor or as a playwright is like, and I can only, if I can only just touch one person is the thing that really excites me and inspires me the, mo the most because as an audience member and as a fan myself, I find it that stories that make me feel like a detective and that I have to put the pieces together uh for me to understand and i gotta keep continually thinking about it afterwards mm -hmm. is very exciting and they, it just gives me so much passion and i just the the play or the movie or the book it just continues to live on after it's done so it actually never really dies so when i think about playwrights like uh carol churchill or Sarah Kane, mm -hmm. those playwrights to me, especially Carol Churchill, who puts up these fragment sentences together where she doesn't even use commas or periods. Um, and then the actors and directors have to interpret it themselves. Like I had told Ashley, I was like, I'm here for all the help you need, but I'm very more interested in you telling your version of it and you and the actors really going deep into it without me kind of holding their hands because I feel like I'm taking away from the work. And plus when I write it and I give it to them, it's no longer mine, it's ours. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to really feel like this community of like collaborating and I've, and, and to me collaborating is also another thing that really inspires me. And then going back to Sarah Kane, Sarah Kane was a very tormented individual playwright and she's very special to me and for her to tell really hard subject plays and then ending basically her playwriting life and it ended up killing herself is just i always wanted to like honor her and and find ways of like picking from her and keep reading her as if she's teaching me mm -hmm. so like these are the elements i guess that kind of really inspired me want to write yeah i love that i think that's beautiful and you mentioned you mentioned her obviously such an important uh, influence and role model on you. So that in, in is also the fact that she lives on through that. So that's really wonderful. And uh, I'm gonna ask all of you, Ashley, I wanna, I wanna ask you, what, was it, what is it that inspires you? Like what brought, what, what sort of brought you into this, this crazy profession, this crazy art that we do? Uh, well, I have been doing it since I've been doing it since. Um, I was in my first, my first, I started with musicals actually, and I was in my first musical, The King and I, and I right. was like, little children, very problematic, um, <laughs> looking at it from today's lens. Um, but it was, it was a really, it left an impression on me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been studying it ever since. I went to a performing arts middle school. I went to performing arts high school. Mm -hmm. I went on to graduate from Pace University, got my BFA in acting. Yeah. Um, and co the college experience really opened my, my, uh, my lens up to the different uh, mediums of this craft, you know, cause there's theater, there's stage, there's voiceover, there's a uh, commercial, there's directing, there's editing, there's so much to it. And um, I think especially now, since we are in quarantine, I'm mm -hmm. kind of using, using that to, to start to branch out. Like I said, I was, I was trying to, you know, boost up my editing and make it better. I'm trying to, you know, reach out to photography. I'm trying to reach out and just, uh, my goal is to make myself, I want to be a multifaceted artist. Like I want to be 
I want to be the the uh, you know the Angela Bassett. I want to be the Issa Rae. I want to be you know I want to act in my stuff. I want to write my stuff. I want to direct my stuff. I want to produce my stuff. You know I want to have my hand in everything because I I really love and believe in what we do. Yeah. Um, and I yeah I I, I just. I want to make the most out of what I feel like is my calling in order to give that back to the world and mm -hmm. and hopefully and hopefully the world and the universe you know accepts what I'm giving out hopefully it makes some changes to the you know to the to the things that you know we speak on as artists and you know because i really really believe in the in the power of art to make change i truly truly believe that um, thank you there's, I no agree. Other field, there's no other field that can that that makes that initial spark there's no. no other field there's a reason why when you have an audience full live we're talking about live theater people like before quarantine there is there is there is no other reason why you can have 300, 400, thousands of people in a theater mm -hmm. and they all, their heartbeats all sync up together as they're watching theater. Yeah. There, there's a reason for that. We, we, I truly, truly believe that, that we, we do make change happen. We do. So I, I agree with you. I agree. You, 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 you hit it exactly. And I know we've had many conversations about this and it's one of the, it's just one of the reasons why I, I, love you so much and I think you're so such such a, a a wonderful artist such really and all these things that you you need to develop this is all it's always it's always a good time to do it but to have the opportunity to do it even in a small play like this 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 work was just so uh really just outstanding outstanding work uh on on so many levels so thank you, thank you so much for that. Uh, now I have to ask my, I have to ask the actors uh, again. What is it like? What what inspires you? What 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 drove you into this work? Uh, and I'm sure you do many other things as well. But what drove you into this? Uh, you, Juan Carlos. Oh, uh, I will default to my co-star to lead off, please. Oh, oh my God. He did such an amazing job that he's given me the pass. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what inspires me? Um, well, definitely art gets me going because um, I can't think of anything else better to do than do art. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess this is where my star sign lies in because I'm half Leo and half Virgo. Mm -hmm. Leos are known to be passionate and fiery, whereas the Virgos are known to be artistic and perfectionist. And I'm glad, well, I'm on the cusp, right? That's what I'm trying to say. And all those gel in wonderfully in order for me to become a performer. I'm, I'm attracted to anything that's creatively beautiful, whether it be, you know, painting or music, fashion. I, I, I like things that are visually appealing as well as audible. I, I don't know if that's the right word, audibly appealing. Audibly, yeah, that's right. Audibly, yes, thank you, Nick. Sure. Um, yes, so, so those, those inspire me um immensely mm -hmm. as a performer not only in terms of what i display on stage um wh whether it be um saying out a line but but outside of theater i also like to express myself uh mm -hmm. i i love to visually express myself because as um, I know I've brought this already before. Um, I happen to be a performer on the autism spectrum. I have Asperger's syndrome. Mm -hmm. And um, our, my, well, actually my disability um, actually, um, how do I say it? My, my disability is on display on how I talk mm -hmm. and how, how I understand things. I, I'd rather 
prefer for my my love of art and the way I express myself through my clothes and through my hair speak volumes than my disability mm -hmm. because that's one way for me to get people's attention even though I'm socially awkward but I want to be able to be a living art piece mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a show off to a fault I've always <laughs> been ever since I was little right um even though I don't express myself well verbally I can do it physically at least I try to yeah and, and also what's going on with our world right now I also want to express that in some kind of art form um I also do a bit of playwriting on the side. Um, I just premiered a, an autobiographical show last year. Mm -hmm. um, it was workshopped, but I have yet to extend it. And I want to, and I want to continue to extend that art piece so it could become a fully staged show. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, what I want to, what I just want to say, what inspires me is art, no matter what medium it is. Just that. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. I know it's a lot to throw in. It's a yeah, but it's but it's I I it, I get it. I understand. I understand completely. Uh, all right, Juan Carlos, you're well, on. Well, what inspires me uh, and also gives me a lot of excitement and joy, and makes me feel alive, is that moment shared between myself and someone else. Uh, that moment when it's genuine, whether it be laughter, whether it's a friend, a family member, um, there's something in those moments that really make me feel inspired. Um, make me feel alive, accepted, a part of the bigger picture, a part of the collective. To that I'll say I also love beauty in whatever it is, you know, whether it's logging on and seeing a video about space and a lot of stuff I don't understand, and that makes me feel inspired and alive. Um, whether it's a piece of poetry or a film I've seen, you know, a thousand times, and I just I'm just so enamored with the with the actors and the work and the writing, and the directing and the cinematography that I'll rewatch it. Whether it's a piece of sta stage, of course we're talking pre-COVID, you know, and actors that I admire or a particular piece that just uh, I'm compelled to go back and see it for, for a different kind of magic on the second or third night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just finding the things in ordinary life, which is not ordinary, that really look different and pop out and kind of reach out to me and say, hey, this is beautiful. And I go, huh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to express this sometimes, but let me remember that. This might help me somewhere else. And then the moment it definitely makes me feel inspired and alive so it's it will retroactively help me anyway but what's that but at the at the at the, the foundation is just anytime i can share a real piece of a moment with somebody with another human being um that that's sort of what i live for yeah uh, extension of just i think my entire being my entire life my my past experiences and the people that i've sort of uh that have allowed me to enter into their lives. So that's kind of what inspires me. I love it. It is. It's, I think connection and interaction is such an important thing. It's one of the things we, we are, um, we've been lacking so much, certainly in the last few months and we see how difficult it is to, to, to live without that. But when you realize how connected we all are, whether we choose to accept that or not, it is fact. We are connected. And yes, in the end, all we have is each other. All we have is us. You can you can you can work very very successfully and amass uh, you know millions of dollars and lots of stuff, lots of possessions. But it doesn't mean anything. It it means nothing. This is what matters. The human interaction, the relationships. This is what matters. Um, I, I, I only want to, I, I, this is a question that somebody had just sent me a text and asked me, I, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask Ashley 
what is the significance of the dates on um, uh, Lupe and uh, Kim's video feeds? I, 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 what, do you, what is that? Yeah, so the significance of the dates, um, uh, sorry, Keem is 8-8-2020. That's present day. That's currently where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, he is the representation of the story that is currently happening to a lot of folk, right? Yes. And 10-28-2011 is when, um, it's hard. It's hard because there is no, there is no specific, like pinpointed event that happened, but it was during the Obama administration um, where the topic, this this thing, immigration, really started to um, become uh, more of a conversation piece in America because of um, a bill that Obama was trying to, President Obama was trying to get passed. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we also know that you know during his presidency lots of um, immigrants were deported. And then um, what ended up happening was passed a bill, I think it was 2014, do not quote me on that, do your research. Um, uh, it was one of, it was, I think it was 2014 where he passed a bill that said, okay, there's gonna be no more deportations, um, but it only applied to immigrants who came into this country um, after, after, no, 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 before 2011. So between 2011 and 2014, you were still subject to be sent back to um, your country, right? So um, I wanted, I, I, I needed a date that allowed for Keem to stay in the country um, and I think also my video of President Obama, I believe is, I believe it's somewhere in that time period of the 10, 28, 2011. Again, I'm not too sure, do your research. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, that's really the, the, the meaning behind it. I, I, I didn't want to do like a past present sort of thing. I really wanted yeah. it to, uh, uh, since this, since this piece, I feel like is such a direct, um, mirror as to what's happening. I wanted there to be specific dates that everybody can latch on to and see what was going on, you know, with the policies and everything during this time. Um, because they they were different, but then then again they were also the same because nobody seems to know how to uh fix this this immigration system that we have. It's still yeah still pretty not working so <laughs> no no and yet it the, some of the answers seem so e easy and obvious and yet some and then and yet there's there's always bureaucracy there's always things there's always interests there's always things that mess it up but anyway like i said we're not talking politics i just want to say uh you know i think to be an artist it takes a great sensitivity we all you know many of us have gotten involved in this business for different reasons some of us you loved going to the movies, loved going to theater and wanted to be a star, wanted to had that idea of we were going to, I was going to become a big famous movie star or whatever. And, you know, and, and I think many are called, but few are chosen. I think ultimately in the course of that, you discover, all right, I'm going to try this. If I don't get discovered and I don't make it, well, then I have to now move on to something more stable. There are those of us who choose to stay in it. It's usually those sensitive souls that realize that it is not about that. Mm -hmm. It is about the process. It is about the work. It is a, it is seeing the deeper meaning. It it truly it becomes a calling, and uh, that to me is what I. That's what inspires me. That's what inspires me as an artist. That's what inspires me as an artistic director. It's finding people that share that same passion, that same, that, that like-minded interest, because that is what, this, this collaboration is what creates and elevates. So I want to thank you all for creating and elevating our work. And again, this is an odd medium, but it is an important medium and everything we do matters. It's not wasted and it, it and people are seeing it. So I'm just so grateful that we're able to, to do something like this in a time when 
It's not, it's not possible. We can't practice it the way we love to do it. So what do we do? We adapt, we find a new way. Our, we're, I, run, I, I work for a theater company that's dedicated to working with disabled actors. That is, that is one of the key, the key elements of people with disabilities, the most adaptable human beings on this planet. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. You are all wonderful, beautiful artists. And I can't wait to work together again. We will. We are going to work together more. We have another intensive coming up in October, and I want you all to be a part of it. Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we ran long tonight, but the conversation just became very interesting. It's great Saturday night talk, I think. Uh, I want to thank you all again for tuning in. Once again, if you haven't seen any of our other works or if this was your first one, thank you for coming in. But you can see all of the other plays that we did this week. Uh, by just checking out our Facebook stream or our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook if you like the work that you saw tonight. Subscribe to our YouTube, to YouTube channel. Let us know how you feel. Tell your friends, tell your families. Uh, we, you know, we're, we've been around for 42 years as a theater company and we, I still say we are one of New York's best kept secrets. Well, now the secret's getting out and we wanna make sure that everyone knows about it. So make sure you tell the world and uh, check, us, check us out on our website, tbtv.org. You could see everything that we've been up to, uh, what we're going to be planning. We have a lot of great plan programming coming up virtually. And we're also, we also have things planned that when, when we are finally able to go back to doing live, we're going to be like, we're going to hit the ground running right out of the gate. We've got so much uh, wonderful stuff planned. Um, if you go to our homepage and you really love us, if you want to click the yellow donate button at the top of the page, the, uh, of course, we appreciate that. We would love that. But again, uh, just having you here tonight is a great gift and thank you for sharing this with us. Um, if, uh, again, we are going to be here tomorrow night. We have a really wonderful play tomorrow night. Um, again, I, I don't want to say, uh, our plays just are, they they just keep, it's like taking a diamond and looking at it from all its different facets. There's all these different, you know, the way the light shines. So we're going to turn the diamond again. And tomorrow night, we've got a great new play by, uh, Khalil Lasaldo called Sing, directed by a very dear friend of mine, Ward Nixon, and starring Martin Lewis and uh, an actor you saw last night, Adream Smith. So, so incredible. Thank you so much for, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe, mask up, and we'll talk to you soon. Good night. Thank you all. Yay. <laughs> Thank you.